Welcome to the One Year Bible, October 7. The Old Testament reading, Jeremiah chapter 8, verse 8, through chapter 9, verse 26. How can you say we are wise because we have the word of the Lord, when your teachers have twisted it by writing lies? These wise teachers will fall into the trap of their own foolishness, for they have rejected the word of the Lord. Are they so wise after all? I will give their wives to others and their farms to strangers. From the least to the greatest, their lives are ruled by greed. Yes, even my prophets and priests are like that. They are all frauds. They offer superficial treatments for my people's mortal wound. They give assurances of peace when there is no peace. Are they ashamed of these disgusting actions? Not at all. They don't even know how to blush. Therefore they will lie among the slaughtered. They will be brought down when I punish them, says the Lord. I will surely consume them. There will be no more harvests of figs and grapes. Their fruit trees will all die. Whatever I gave them will soon be gone. I, the Lord, have spoken. Then the people will say, Why should we wait here to die? Come, let's go to the fortified towns and die there. For the Lord our God has decreed our destruction and has given us a cup of poison to drink because we sinned against the Lord. We hoped for peace, but no peace came. We hoped for a time of healing, but found only terror. The snorting of the enemy's war horses can be heard, all the way from the land of Dan in the north. The neighing of their stallions makes the whole land tremble. They are coming to devour the land and everything in it, cities and people alike. I will send these enemy troops among you, like poisonous snakes you cannot charm. They will bite you, and you will die. I, the Lord, have spoken. My grief is beyond healing. My heart is broken. Listen to the weeping of my people. It can be heard all across the land. Has the Lord abandoned Jerusalem? The people ask. Is her king no longer there? Oh, why have they provoked my anger with their carved idols and their worthless foreign gods, says the Lord. The harvest is finished. And the summer is gone, the people cry, yet we are not saved. I hurt with the hurt of my people. I mourn and am overcome with grief. Is there no medicine in Gilead? Is there no physician there? Why is there no healing for the wounds of my people? If only my head were a pool of water and my eyes a fountain of tears, I would weep day and night for all my people who have been slaughtered. Oh, that I could go away and forget my people and live in a traveler's shack in the desert, for they are all adulterers, a pack of treacherous liars. My people bend their tongues like bows to shoot out lies. They refuse to stand up for the truth. They only go from bad to worse. They do not know me says the Lord. Beware of your neighbor. Don't even trust your brother. For brother takes advantage of brother, and friend slanders friend. They all fool and defraud each other. No one tells the truth. With practiced tongues they tell lies. They wear themselves out with all their sinning. They pile lie upon lie and utterly refuse to acknowledge me, says the Lord. Therefore this is what the Lord of heaven's army says, See, I will melt them down in a crucible, and test them like metal. What else can I do with my people? For their tongues shoot lies like poisoned arrows. They speak friendly words to their neighbors, while scheming in their heart to kill them. Should I not punish them for this, says the Lord? Should I not avenge myself against such a nation? 
I will weep for the mountains and wail for the wilderness pastures, for they are desolate and empty of life. The lowing of cattle is heard no more. The birds and wild animals have all fled. I will make Jerusalem into a heap of ruins, says the Lord. It will be a place haunted by jackals. The towns of Judah will be ghost towns with no one living in them. Who is wise enough to understand all this? Who has been instructed by the Lord and can explain it to others? Why has the land been so ruined that no one dares to travel through it? The Lord replies, This has happened because my people have abandoned my instructions. They have refused to obey what I said. Instead, they have stubbornly followed their own desires and worshipped the images of Baal as their ancestors taught them. So now, this is what the Lord of Heaven's armies, the God of Israel, says, Look, I will feed them with bitterness and give them poison to drink. I will scatter them around the world in places they and their ancestors never heard of, and even there I will chase them with the sword until I have destroyed them completely. This is what the Lord of Heaven's army says. Consider all this and call for the mourners. Send for the women who mourn at funerals. Quick, begin your weeping. Let the tears flow from your eyes. Hear the people of Jerusalem crying in despair. We are ruined. We are completely humiliated. We must leave our land because our homes have been torn down. Listen, you women, to the words of the Lord. Open your ears to what He has to say. Teach your daughters to wail. Teach one another how to lament. For death has crept in through our windows and has entered our mansions. It has killed off the flower of our youth. Children no longer play in the streets and young men no longer gather in the squares. This is what the Lord says. Bodies will be scattered across the fields like clumps of manure, like bundles of grain after the harvest. No one will be left to bury them. This is what the Lord says. Don't let the wise boast in their wisdom, or the powerful boast in their power, or the rich boast in their riches. But those who wish to boast should boast in this alone, that they truly know me and understand that I am the Lord who demonstrates unfailing love and who brings justice and righteousness to the earth, and that I delight in these things. I, the Lord, have spoken. A time is coming, says the Lord, when I will punish all those who are circumcised in body but not in spirit. The Egyptians, Edomites, Ammonites, Moabites, the people who live in the desert in remote places, and yes, even the people of Judah. And like all these pagan nations, the people of Israel also have uncircumcised hearts. The New Testament reading Colossians chapter 3, verses 1 through 17. Since you have been raised to new life with Christ, set your sights on the realities of heaven, where Christ sits in the place of honor at God's right hand. Think about the things of heaven, not the things of earth. For you died to this life, and your real life is hidden with Christ in God. And when Christ, who is your life, is revealed to the whole world, you will share in all His glory. So put to death the sinful, earthly things lurking within you. Have nothing to do with sexual immorality, impurity, lust, and evil desires. Don't be greedy, for a greedy person is an idolater, worshiping the things of this world. Because of these sins, the anger of God is coming. You used to do these things when your life was still part of this world, but now is the time to get rid of anger, rage, malicious behavior, slander, and dirty language. Don't lie to each other, 
For you have stripped off your old sinful nature and all its wicked deeds. Put on your new nature and be renewed as you learn to know your Creator and become like Him. In this new life, it doesn't matter if you are a Jew or a Gentile, circumcised or uncircumcised, barbaric, uncivilized, slave or free. Christ is all that matters and He lives in all of us. Since God chose you to be the holy people He loves, you must clothe yourselves with tender-hearted mercy, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Make allowance for each other's faults and forgive anyone who offends you. Remember, the Lord forgave you, so you must forgive others. Above all, clothe yourselves with love, which binds us all together in perfect harmony and let the peace that comes from Christ rule in your hearts. For as members of one body, you are called to live in peace and always be thankful. Let the message about Christ in all its richness fill your lives. Teach and counsel each other with all the wisdom He gives. Sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs to God with thankful hearts. And whatever you do or say, Do it as a representative of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks through Him to God the Father. Psalm 78, verses 32 through 55. But in spite of this, the people kept sinning. Despite His wonders, they refused to trust Him. So He ended their lives in failure, their years in terror. When God began killing them, they finally sought Him. They repented and took God seriously. Then they remembered that God was their rock, that God Most High was their Redeemer. But all they gave Him was lip service. They lied to Him with their tongues. Their hearts were not loyal to Him. They did not keep His covenant. Yet He was merciful and forgave their sins and did not destroy them all. Many times He held back His anger and did not unleash His fury. For He remembered that they were merely mortal, gone like a breath of wind that never returns. Oh, how often they rebelled against Him in the wilderness and grieved His heart in that dry wasteland. Again and again they tested God's patience and provoked the Holy One of Israel. They did not remember His power and how He rescued them from their enemies. They did not remember His miraculous signs in Egypt, His wonders on the plain of Zoan, for He turned their rivers into blood so no one could drink from the streams. He sent vast swarms of flies to consume them and hordes of frogs to ruin them. He gave their crops to caterpillars Their harvest was consumed by locusts. He destroyed their grapevines with hail and shattered their sycamore figs with sleet. He abandoned their cattle to the hail, their livestock to bolts of lightning. He loosed on them his fierce anger, all his fury, rage, and hostility. He dispatched against them a band of destroying angels. He turned his anger against them. He did not spare the Egyptians' lives, but ravaged them with the plague. He killed the oldest son in each Egyptian family, the flower of youth throughout the land of Egypt. But he led his own people like a flock of sheep, guiding them safely through the wilderness. He kept them safe so they were not afraid. But the sea covered their enemies. He brought them to the border of his holy land to this land of hills he had won for them. He drove out the nations before them. He gave them their inheritance by lot. He settled the tribes of Israel into their homes. Proverbs 24, verse 27. Do your planning and prepare your fields before building your house.